How do you secure software? Um, that's a trick question, you can't. Uh, you can't really secure software as far as uh, making sure it's free from vulnerabilities. The only thing that is secure about software that we have here is validating that the uh, software we want to run is running um, and that it's doing what it's supposed to do. If you go to any of the vendors, any of the tools, that's pretty much what they all do. One is going to check uh, security hashes or mutual TLS or something along those lines uh, or SBOMs and then the other side is going to say like, oh, is it calling the things it's supposed to? Is it running the processes it's supposed to? That's what we call security uh, in this field, but it's not actually uh, software that's free of bugs or free of security vulnerabilities. Um, any software that we want to check and verify, what, don't do that, uh, is, seriously, any software we're going to check is actually secure, is going to be uh, some long, somewhere along the lines of validating that it is uh, free of known vulnerabilities. We're going to say, oh, we have a database of known vulnerabilities, and we're going to check against that, and our software does not have that. That's what we call security, um, and, and that's what most of this conference is about. Uh, if you want secure software, it's code you don't write. Um, that's the stuff that you don't run, you don't write it, that's secure. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how applications get secure because we're doing all that through this validation and things. But what about the systems where they run? And uh, I have a prop that I love bringing props for my talks. Um, this is a Ricky Martin CD. And if you're too young to know what a CD is, uh, don't worry about it. It's like a physical version of Spotify. Um, if you're too young to know who Ricky Martin is, don't worry, you didn't miss much. Um, <laughs> uh, but this, this CD is actually very dangerous software, um, this piece of software. And no, not because Ricky Martin was living La Vida Loca. Um, that's actually not on this CD. Uh, but because this CD physically has a rootkit on it, um, it has a rootkit that was designed and written by Sony uh, so that people couldn't copy the music files off of their CDs. Uh, if you wanted to make an authorized copy of this CD, you had to use uh, Sony's proprietary software that they bundled with the CD uh, so that you could uh, then go through and validate and make three versions of a copy of the CD, and you can give it to your friends. And those three versions actually had the rootkit on it as well. And that rootkit would install itself on your system without you asking. It would hide itself from your system so you didn't know it was running. And it would replace your CD-ROM drivers so you couldn't copy the files from it. That's kind of bad. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> but this was like what it was like in the world of, hey, we want to make sure that you buy our CD and not copy it and give it to a friend. Um, and so uh, all of that was uh, exposed because someone, uh, like many things like uh, happened today, looked at their system and said, hey, what's going on over here? Um, and they noticed their CD-ROM drivers were being replaced and all this stuff was going on. Um, so how do we validate and secure the systems underneath? Because uh, that was a modification, an unauthorized modification, and any software above that now was modified. It didn't matter if it was S-bombed and, and secure or whatever. Like all of the software running on that host system with this installed uh, could then be insecure. And even though the software itself, the rootkit, was not uh, really nefarious, it actually had bugs in it. And other viruses used that rootkit to get into the system. Um, so even if someone didn't install the rootkit for you, they could use that and then get in. Uh, um, so how do we do that with systems? In, in systems, when you push the power button or spin up the VM, you uh, are going to send electrons to this uh, software that runs in hardware called firmware. It's kind of squishy in the middle. And that software is supposed to validate the first sector of your hard drive uh, for your bootloader. And that bootloader can be signed. And we can say, oh, is that bootloader something I trust, yes or no? And, and that's what we call secure boot. Secure boot is this way of validating from the firmware up into the operating system. And then that bootloader is then going to call uh, your kernel, and that kernel is going to call uh, maybe a decryption on your hard drive. And every one of those steps is going to say, hey, I need to validate. I need to have some assurances that this is what I think it should be. And that's all we're doing. Up the chain, just like in software, we're just validating that every one of those steps is the thing we expect it to be and hasn't been modified. Because once we sign it with a signature, we can say yes or no, that is the thing I think it should be. And usually those are stored in something like a TPM, a trusted platform module, which holds security uh, signatures that we can say, hey, I have this thing, can I run it, yes or no? Okay, cool, we'll go to the next step. And from power on <clears throat> of your system all the way up to the kernel, all the way up through Kubernetes, we can do those validation steps. It's not that it's secure, it's that it's validated. And again, like I said at the beginning, the only way to have uh, secure code is to not write it. Um, to have something that you say, actually, we just don't want this to run because it doesn't apply to us. Maybe we don't need that functionality. And every uh, Linux distribution that's running Kubernetes uh, is, is typically running something like systemd, which is a general purpose uh, init system for a computer. And it does a lot of things for you, and it is really flexible, and it allows you to get a ton of stuff into your system. Uh, I work at a company called Sidero. We have a software called Talos, and this is a fully 
pre-booted uh, system that is waiting for you to configure it and say, hey, send me some, some details on how this runs. Uh, you'll notice there's only four processes running. The entire OS is less than four processes. And this is software we didn't write. We decided to start from scratch and we say, hey, from kernel to Kubernetes, how can we do the minimal amount of code in between? And again, that is the like security bit of it. It's, it's still validated, it's still signed, and those sorts of things. Um, but that was the security down to the kernel. This is a lightning talk. I'm sorry, I can't go in depth with it. I don't want to uh, take time from everyone else. So that's really all I wanted to say is just writing less code is the thing that's secure, but validation is important to make sure that things are known entities when we're securing them. Thank you.